Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. <clears throat> we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We sing the hymn, Awake, Awake. Awake, awake, fling up the night, for God has sent his glorious light, and we who live in Christ's new day must works of darkness put away. Awake and rise in Christ renewed, and with the Spirit's power endued, the light of life in us must glow, and fruits of truth and goodness show. Let in the light of sin expose to Christ, whose life no darkness knows. Before his cross for guidance kneel, his light will judge and judging heal. Awake and rise up from the dead, and Christ his light on you will shed. Its power will wrong desires destroy, and your whole nature fill with joy. Then sing for joy and use each day, give thanks for everything alway, lift up your hearts with one accord, Praise God through Jesus Christ our Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing Canticle number 2, the Benite. Let us sing to the God of salvation, to the Lord let us praises bring. Let us come to his house with thanksgiving, let us come before the Lord and sing. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before him, God is Lord of everything. In his hand are the earth's deep places, and the strength of the mountains.
mountains tall. All the sea is the Lord's, for he made it. By his loving hands he formed us all. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before him, God is Lord of everything. Sing glory to God the Father, sing glory to God the Son, sing glory to God the Holy Spirit, who was and is and is to come. Praise our Maker, praise our Saviour, praise the Lord our everlasting King. Every throne must bow before Him, God is Lord of everything. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your Church, Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptised, on what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on five in one household will be divided three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wow! That's rather a shocking statement of Jesus, or shocking statements in that passage. If it's startling to hear the words of Jesus today, I can't imagine how hard it must have been to hear it at first hand all those many years ago. The rabbi, Jesus, who'd made a career out of including everyone, no matter what it was that caused them to be excluded, now stands before the disciples and says, Do you think I came to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. What? Jesus tells us that he didn't come to bring peace to the earth. But even before he said it, perhaps we should really have known for Jesus too often challenged the status quo. He made people feel uncomfortable, especially those with vested interests in keeping things the way they were and always had been. By breaking bread with notorious sinners and tax collectors, he challenged the status quo. By healing on the Sabbath, he challenged the status quo. By talking with women, he challenged the status quo. By challenging the religious authorities, speaking in parables, bringing the dead back to life, and by preaching the kingdom of God, he challenged the status quo. Everything Jesus did and said 
pushed against the idea that God is supposed to make life easy for us, making our lives peaceful. And he challenged his future disciples to be prepared for difficulties that would come when they tried to follow his example. It was never going to be easy, comfortable and straightforward. You see, living a life of the kingdom of God, in a world which is hell-bent on the successes of the kingdoms of power, the kingdoms of privilege, the kingdoms of money, the kingdoms of self-interest, is bound to cause division. Of that there's no doubt. There continues to be an ongoing battle between the kingdom of God and the powers of this world. For following Jesus in the 21st century means doing such unpopular things as caring for the poor, showing hospitality to immigrants and strangers, honouring the sanctity of human life, forgiving those who've hurt you, praying for your enemies, showing compassion to the weak, respecting those whom you disagree with, and generally loving your neighbour as yourself. This runs counter to much of the culture and politics of our age, which is so often built upon fear and mistrust, anger and self-preservation. So those who are called to live lives of the kingdom today will certainly find themselves at odds with much in our world. It's bound to cause division in a world that sadly is increasingly bipolar and divided, seeing the world only in black and white, with no room for all the grey areas in the middle. You see, Jesus came to tear us away from the hateful rhetoric of this world in order to see clearly and experience in our lives and in our communities the beautiful peace of the Kingdom of God. Living out the law of the Kingdom that Christ came to bring means loving God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and it means loving our neighbour as ourselves. It means laying down idols like peace, security, comfort, power and privilege and putting the needs of the other ahead of your own. It means sharing with those in need. It means calling to account systems of oppression. It means voting based on something other than what might bring comfort to me. Seeking the common good. If we take that seriously, that's life-changing. It was for those who heard Jesus in Palestine. It's still for us today, if we allow Jesus to shake us out of our comfort zones. I came to bring fire to the earth, says Jesus. And bearing in mind, he's on the verge of approaching Jerusalem. The last days of his life. I came to bring fire to the earth. And I'm preaching to myself here, I'm aware of that. For I don't always say what the Gospel would have me say, or live the way that Christ would have me live. It is however for each of us to find that place where the idol of peace and comfort can be set aside and the challenging Gospel of Jesus Christ can be allowed to unsettle us challenge us, take us into pastures new. And this aspect of a disciple is well expressed in that hymn by John Bell from the Iona community, which tells of the calling of the fishermen, James and Andrew, Peter and John. In particular, the last two verses. Let me read them. Stir then the waters, Lord, stir up the wind, Stir the hope that needs to be stretched. Stir up the love that needs to be ground. Stir the faith that needs to be fetched. James and Andrew, Peter and John, 
and the women close by his side. Hear how the Lord calls each by their name, asking all to turn like the tide. So let us affirm our shared faith in the words of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God is close to us as we pray, attentive to us now. And we pray that the Lord would lead us to walk in his ways. Lord, whenever you weep over our harshness, make your tears melt our hearts of stone. Whenever you grieve over our double standards, shock us into honesty again. Make us receptive to your teaching, willing to take your risks eager to run the race of life with our eyes fixed on Jesus. Lead us, Lord, to walk in your ways, and in your mercy hear our prayer. Whenever the news overwhelms us, nudge us to fervent prayer. Wherever leaders meet to negotiate peace, be present table. Breathe your values into our thinking, tear down the divisive barriers and renew us to lead the world into loving and caring for one another. Lead us, Lord, to walk in your ways and in your mercy hear our prayer. Whenever tempers are frayed and patience is wearing thin, give us space to collect ourselves and to try again. Whenever the demands of family and friends remind us of our limitations, minister graciously through our weakness and teach us the humility of apologising and the grace of forgiveness. Lead us, Lord, to walk in your ways, and in your mercy hear our prayer. Whenever people are enveloped by pain, or desolate grief, or exhaustion, bring refreshment and peace, tranquility and hope. Wherever the grip of the past prevents free movement into the future, bring release. to walk in your ways and in your mercy hear our prayer. Whenever the dying are fearful and distressed, give comfort and reassurance on that last journey. Bless those who care for them and those who mourn their going. In mercy receive the dead into the life of your heaven and prepare us through our lives now, for eternity. 
Lead us, Lord, to walk in your ways, and in your mercy hear our prayer. Holy God, we love the beauty and goodness of nature, and thank you for the gift of your Spirit to guide us to walk always in your ways. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And let's offer ourselves afresh in God's service as we say together. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing as our second hymn, James and Andrew, Peter and John. James and Andrew, Peter and John, men of temper, talent and tide, your nets are empty, empty and bare, cast them now on the opposite side. Jesus, your only a carpenter's son, joints and joists are part of your trade, but as the skill to harvest the deep, why presume to come to our aid? Friends of mine and brothers through love, I mean more than fishing for food. I call your skill to service my will, call your lives to harvest the good. Cast your nets where you think is right, spend your lives where you think is need, but if you long for that which is best, let it be on my word you feed. Stir then the waters, Lord, stir up the wind, stir the hope that needs to be stretched, stir up the love that needs to be ground, stir the faith that needs to be fed. James and Andrew, Peter and John, and the women close by his side, hear how the Lord calls each by the name, asking all to turn like the Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you.
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.